So Daily Alake came out to announce that there will be a flood of foreign direct investment into Nigeria. And people are clapping for Tinubu because of this. But I don't blame them because it's either they don't understand the effect of foreign direct investment in a developing economy such as Nigeria, or they are just overpaid rabble rousers or psychophants singing the praise of Tinubu to the detriment of the entire population of Nigeria. Foreign direct investment is not bad if the investment is going into critical sector of an economy. If the foreign direct investment is going to rapidly industrialize an economy, but what do we find about the foreign direct investment that Dele Alake is talking about? The foreign direct investment is talking about, from what we can see now, from the likes of the ambassador of France, the ambassador of Japan coming to visit him in Aso Rock, from the likes of the, uh, the head of Shell, Shell Nigeria, the Microsoft Kruna or the Microsoft owner. Bill Gates visiting him in Aso Rock. From what we see in all of this and the recent talk about the NNPCL having foreign direct investment to lay, I think it's a $6 billion investment for floating LNG. All of these foreign direct investments, you'll see that they are directed at strategic sectors of the Nigerian economy that are aimed at keeping Nigeria dependent on the West. That is the danger of the type of foreign direct investment that Tinubu is bringing into Nigeria. Look at it very critically. Anytime the government, particularly the government of Tinubu, talks about investing heavily into agriculture, ask yourself, where does this money go? It goes into buying mechanized farming or mechanized agricultural equipment. Where does those mechanized equipment come from? From China, from Japan, from the European Union, from America. So any heavy investment into agriculture, quote and unquote, is actually just benefiting the countries from where those equipment come. Because ultimately, they are the ones that benefit. It is just the crumbs that we get in terms of benefit for the farmers. And of course, that helps the agenda of the World Bank and the IMF in destroying our food self-sustainability. And we are giving them that on the platter of gold. Anytime you hear that the Tinubu administration wants to invest into infrastructure, construction of roads, construction of buildings, ask yourself, ultimately, the materials that are required for this, where do they come from? They are imported. And so it means that the funds, the so-called heavy investment into this sector is actually going abroad to foreign countries to create jobs for them. Anytime you hear the Tinubu administration talk about investing heavily into electricity, ask yourself, what are the materials that are needed to get our electricity sector, our power sector up and running? 90% of the materials that you need have to be imported. So such heavy investment into electricity production or power generation, transmission and distribution, such heavy investments will actually be going to benefiting the countries from where those equipment will be imported. So when you hear foreign direct investment, even including in health, in education, the majority of it actually goes out. Look at, do you know how much Nigeria spends on software, software technology, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft um, PowerPoint, Oracle Database, Microsoft Exchange for emails, or Microsoft Dynamics, all of these softwares from these big software corporations from the West. Do you know how much Nigeria spends on them? So, so much. Smart countries, do you know what they do? They actually home grow their own local solutions to reduce their dependency on these foreign corporations. And it's not just about 
dependency on these foreign corporations. Your national data is sitting on the application of foreign countries. That's a national security threat. Americans will not allow it. Right now, America has banned the use of TikTok on any government-issued devices in America. They have banned it. Why? Because they suspect that TikTok, which is a Chinese company that does not have their servers in China, by the way, they suspect that TikTok will harness the information about the personnel and even security of the United States and relay such information to the government of China. They are afraid, and because of that, they have banned it. There are certain things that you just don't do, not necessarily because you want to grow your economy, but because of your own nation's national security. And of course, your own country's sovereignty and national pride. We don't think about that when we do our heavy investment in software technologies. I am not saying that we should not invest in foreign software technologies. That's not the point. But the point is this. When we're talking um, foreign direct investment and these so-called foreign companies are coming to Nigeria to invest, we should guide them towards the sectors that will ensure aggressive industrialization of our economy because that is what will create jobs. If we continue to allow these so-called investors to come and invest in the sectors that they are targeting, they're targeting the power sector, they're targeting the oil and gas sector, they're targeting the transportation sector, they're targeting the agricultural sector. If we continue to allow them to target these sectors the way they are targeting the sector, then we will continue to keep Nigeria enslaved to them and dependent for them, on them forever. Because whatever investments they claim to make in here, Whatever loans they claim to provide to us, those loans never leave their countries. Those investments actually goes back to their countries because the equipment and the devices and the materials they will use for such investments are actually manufactured in their countries. So the only way foreign direct investment will benefit Nigeria and benefit Nigerians to create jobs, to improve the condition and quality of their living, is to ensure that the foreign direct investment is only targeted at sectors that will ensure aggressive industrialization of Nigeria. And that is, number one, activating Ajaokuta and Alaja Steel, creating and enabling a virile steel sector, in addition to qualitative technology transfer that will help us to produce and manufacture, to convert our raw materials into end products in Nigeria here. That's the only foreign direct investment that can benefit us. And unfortunately, the so-called foreign direct investment that Alake is talking about, that we flood Nigeria, are not looking in this direction. They are looking in the other direction that would just keep us impoverished. Because what they are looking at is, they want to easily extract our raw materials and help us to export our raw materials to their countries. They will use their manufacturing and industrial prowess to convert those raw materials to finished goods, then import them and sell them back to us in the name of foreign direct investment. That's what they are doing. And that's not good for Nigeria. Because, to say the least, they will only create a minimal amount of jobs and killing the larger potential amount of jobs that Nigeria actually needs. Right now, Nigeria needs a minimum of 50 million jobs, and it cannot come from low-quality jobs that will be generated or created by this so-called foreign direct investment in sectors that are designed to keep Nigeria enslaved. What Nigeria needs is foreign direct investment, if any, in the areas that will ensure that Nigeria reaches industrialization aggressively, and that will only come from Ajakuta Steel, Alaja steel and all the ancillary steel businesses surrounding steel. And then we cannot start talking about manufacturing our own agricultural equipment, manufacturing our own security equipment, cars and um, weapons and ammunition, transmission lines, generating plants. We cannot start talking about it. That was what China did. That was what India did. That's what South Korea did. That was what Japan did. We can do it as well. Let us focus on that, not this fraudulent so-called foreign direct investment they are talking about. If you look at it in details, you will see that 
they're actually just selling Nigeria into slavery 3.0. What do you think?